There you are, playing the PvP in your World War II shooter, and all of a sudden, you're a Nazi. You didn't ask for this. You didn't choose this. Yet there it is. There you are, playing your modern shooter, and all of a sudden, you're a terrorist. You didn't ask for this. You didn't choose this. And yet, second verse, same as the first. There it is. Why is this still a thing? Good evening, everybody. I just found the keys to a city. The beats are big and the lights are pretty. So what? I told you that playing as an elite in Halo meant you fully supported the Covenant's genocidal campaign, and that you would suddenly be in support of real-life genocide, often playing a few rounds of Invasion on Halo Reach. Hey guys, welcome back, and today I've got a very, uh, special kind of video for you. Another video that makes my head hurt. I mean, it's safe to say this is officially the worst take on gaming I have seen since Anita Sarkeesian. If there is worst out there, you must send it to me. Anyway, this guy's convinced that if you play as a Nazi in Call of Duty multiplayer, then you endorse Nazi ideology in real life. The video is called Stop Normalizing Nazis, uploaded by the channel Extra Credit, and it has a like-to-dislike ratio comparable to YouTube Rewind. Oh, and let me tell you, it is well-deserved. So, Anita 2.0, bring it on. There you are, playing the PvP in your World War II shooter, and all of a sudden, you're a Nazi. You didn't ask for this. You didn't choose this. Yet there it is. Yeah, you know, I was just sitting there, Friday night, playing some Doom multiplayer, picked up a demon room, and all of a sudden, I'm a demon in real life. I didn't ask for this. I didn't choose this. And I'm also replicating the famous Deus Ex monologue. I also want to call special attention to this statement. There you are, playing the PvP in your World War II shooter. Notice how he said PvP. So in this whole video, we're going to be referring to multiplayer, not the campaign, which changes just about everything. Anyway, continuing on, and it's treated no differently than playing a British soldier. Well, yeah, it's multiplayer. It's supposed to be a balanced, competitive experience. All the characters are... are vessels for hitboxes. You are a player model with the ability to do damage and the ability to take damage. Nothing more, nothing less. And in a competitive environment, you kind of want things to be as balanced as possible. Say you're playing... Invasion on Halo Reach. One side is headed by human Spartans, the other, Covenant Elites. And the Elites, well, they're involved in the Covenant, and the Covenant have slaughtered billions. So we give them all focus rifles purely because their ideology is awful. And then we give all the humans rocket launchers. It doesn't work. And because this is multiplayer, that example is still relevant. Because once again, all you are is a vessel for a hitbox and a gun. You have a very aggressive intro. This is bad on so many levels. And why is that? Because having a World War II themed multiplayer while also having it balanced is inherently bad because people playing for the Nazis are automatically going to be indoctrinated into Nazi ideology? No one should ever have a random chance of fighting for the Nazis. In most first person shooters, you have the option to choose your team, especially in themed ones. For example, Star Wars Battlefront, you can choose to play as either the Empire or the Rebellion. Emphasis on choose. And if you click random select, then you don't get to be pissed off when you get put on the team you didn't want to play on. And on top of that, you aren't fighting for the Nazis, you're inhabiting a, a cluster of pixels designed to shoot at other clusters of pixels on a screen in a World War II themed multiplayer competitive video game. It's not like this is the gamer where you're controlling a real person who happens to be Gerard Butler wearing a Nazi uniform actually carrying out the acts you commit on screen. And if you do get put on the team you didn't choose to be on, then that's because of a balancing issue. So deal with it. 
is a competitive shooter. It's kind of how it's supposed to be. Why do you think people like me get so pissed off when people leave our team in Halo? And we should never express that there's no meaningful difference between Nazis and Allied soldiers, or that they're functionally interchangeable. In multiplayer, they literally are functionally interchangeable. If you were talking about the campaign, yeah, I might agree with you. Because one side happens to be the antagonists, and the other the protagonists. But as you said in the beginning, we're talking about multiplayer. If they aren't functionally interchangeable in multiplayer, then good luck getting people to play your game. If it's unbalanced and broken in the name of virtue signaling, then no one's gonna play it. And one general thing I've noticed up to this point, throughout this entire video, you've been very carefully selecting your words to make it sound like you're actually fighting for the Nazis if you select the Nazi side in a World War II shooter. I'm sorry, but that's not how reality works. I am not literally becoming a demon when I pick up a demon rune in Doom. I am not endorsing Covenant Genocide when I play as an elite in Halo Reach. I don't endorse trophy killing when I play as the Predator in Alien vs. Predator. I swear I'm gonna need a reference counter up there somewhere. Someday. Someday. And before anyone equivocates and says not all German soldiers in World War II were Nazis. Fun fact, the majority of German soldiers in World War II were actually forced into service. Because Adolf Hitler introduced something called conscription, which is basically mandatory military service under threat of death or imprisonment. My source will be linked in the description below. And on top of all of that, Adolf thought it would be a good idea to kill all of his opposition. So, there you go. You oppose the Nazi regime, you end up either dead or in prison. Or worse. And we know what worse is. If they were wearing the swastika and are functioning as an arm of the Nazi government, then unless the game goes out of its way to tell you specifically that your particular character is not a Nazi, then they're a Nazi. Conscription. Do your research, please. Just because you fight for a certain army doesn't mean that you endorse what that government does. For example, not every US soldier is a hardcore Republican. And on top of all of this, again, this is the multiplayer, not the campaign. So you're right, they weren't pressed into service. You pressed play. There would be an argument here if we were talking about the campaign, albeit a shitty one. But we're not. We're talking about the multiplayer, where morality and politics don't matter. It is a competitive environment meant for you to go around and shoot other people, no matter which side you're on. It's not like I'll be playing Rainbow Six Siege or Call of Duty, and every time I kill someone, a message pops up in the bottom of the screen telling me, hey, you just killed someone. That's bad. Don't do that. Because all the arguments you've made so far have been basically equal to the video games cause real life violence argument that has been debunked dozens of times. And on top of all of this, you have yet to state how any of this is an actual problem. All you've done is state that it is. In that multiplayer shooter, when it switched you to the German side, did it go out of its way to tell you that the person you're playing was pressed into service under threat of their life? Just imagine for a second, every time you booted up Call of Duty World at War, or more recently World War II, or Battlefield V if you for some reason still own that game, you end up on the side of the Nazis. The game goes black and white, and then a British woman starts talking. The Nazis were awful people. What they did was abhorrent. They are not the good guys. I swear to literally everyone watching this video, I will never do that again. We came to video games for entertainment, not a history lesson. If I wanted a history lesson on World War II, then I would go watch a documentary. I would turn on the History Channel. I would open a history book. I would not boot up Call of Duty. Because I booted up Call of Duty to have fun not be lectured about how terrible the side I'm playing for is. Just like when you're playing No Russian in Modern Warfare 2, you aren't given a monologue that tells you how awful the Axe Makarov commits are. And, similar to choosing your team, they give you the option to skip the mission. If you don't want to play as a Nazi, then choose the Allies. Or better yet, go play some Halo Combat Evolved split screen on the original Xbox so we don't have to listen to you complain about it. Yeah, that's a big ol' nope. Oh, and on a similar note, let's please stop forcing people to play as terrorists as well. There you are, playing your modern shooter, and all of a sudden you're a terrorist. You didn't ask for this, you didn't choose this, and yet second verse, same as the first, there it is. I mean, that's literally the name of your side in the game. Yeah, you know, you boot up CSGO, and then you end up on the terrorist side, and all of a sudden, you're a terrorist, IRL, because you decided to play CSGO for an hour. And I said an hour because that's about the maximum I can, I can survive playing that game because I'm terrible. Side note, if we were to ever end up on the same team in CSGO, it would be in your best interest to switch teams. Anyways, back to what I was saying. 
You aren't forced to play as a terrorist. You're the one who decided to buy CSGO. You're the one who decided to boot up the multiplayer. And, you know, do something other than surf, because that's all I can seem to do on that game. It's like booting up Titanfall, and then getting angry when you get put on the IMC. It's like, hey, these guys are the bad guys. Why am I playing in them in multiplayer that is themed after the campaign, where it's IMC versus Militia? Or in Titanfall 1's case, the multiplayer is the campaign, where it has to be Militia versus IMC. The reference counter is coming one day, boys. It's going to happen. I just don't know when. Depends on when I, you know, decide to be less lazy and just put the number in the upper right-hand corner. We can do better than this. Oh, please tell me, how can we do better? Or better yet, why don't you actually tell me why it's a problem to have a World War II-themed multiplayer with Nazis versus the Allies? Or terrorists versus counter-terrorists? Because you have yet to say why it is actually a bad thing. All you've done is say that it is. Even if you put aside all of the people who have had traumatic experiences with these groups, who have lost loved ones to terrorists, or who have had generations of their families wiped out by Nazis, no one is being forced to do any of this. There are several decisions that you have to make before ending up playing as a Nazi in a World War II game. Decision number one, the decision to buy the game. Decision number two, the decision to boot up the multiplayer. And decision number three, the decision not to change your team. Like, yeah, what the Nazis did was terrible, but I'm just trying to play my multiplayer game. No one in their right mind, by playing multiplayer, is thinking about, oh, hey, the Nazis did all this. They are awful people. If anything, they're playing multiplayer to get away from that kind of thing, to escape reality, and to be competitive. Playing on a certain team in a video game does not mean that you endorse their ideology. Going back to the Halo example from the beginning of the video, playing for the Covenant in Invasion does not mean that you endorse genocide, and neither does playing as a Nazi, or playing as a terrorist, or any other awful ideology. It's just multiplayer. It is competitive. It is meant to be fun. It is not meant to be a history lesson. Side note, I just checked back on the video and they actually made a comment responding to all of the criticism they've been getting. So I'll probably go over that at the end of the video. No one should have to put on the costume of an ideology they find abhorrent without actually opting into it in your game. They chose to buy the game. They chose to boot up multiplayer. They chose to not switch teams. You can opt in or out of playing on a certain team in a themed first-person shooter. You can change teams in Call of Duty, CSGO, Star Wars, and if you have a problem with it, and you are forced, in quotations, then why did you select random? You are not forced to do anything. Again, there are multiple decisions leading up to it. How stupid do you think your audience is? Because going off of everything you've said so far, you think we're all a bunch of mindless drones who have no idea what you're saying. And going off of how well this video has been received, well... I can see that that's just not the case. And I'm sure you can too. And by making people do so, we get them to stop thinking about it. Yeah, you're right, you do stop thinking about it. It's multiplayer, you're supposed to be thinking about the game. You're supposed to be focusing on overpowering the enemy team. Not the history of the event that you're taking part in, in a video game. It's multiplayer, there are no real life consequences. Aside from maybe getting DDoS by some overly sensitive scumbag. And on top of that, going off of what I've seen, it seems that Games themed off World War I and II have gotten more people interested in the history and the politics of said wars than the History Channel ever could have dreamed. Before playing Battlefield I, I knew next to nothing about World War I, and I went on and did research of my own after playing through the game's multiplayer for a few hundred hours, as I'm sure it did for many other people. But overall, it's multiplayer. It's not supposed to make you think about the history. You're supposed to be there to play the game, to have fun, and to kick the enemy team's ass to stop thinking of the meaning behind these things. We normalize them. We make them just window dressing for entertainment. That's because multiplayer is meant to be entertaining. I know, shocking, right? Again, I don't play Call of Duty multiplayer for a history lesson. I don't play Battlefield 1 multiplayer for a history lesson. I don't play Rainbow Six or CSGO to hear about how terrible terrorism is. I play the multiplayer to have fun. Those uniforms, those symbols, become things that no longer inherently revolt us. They reduce our visceral reaction to seeing the embodiment of these ideologies. So what, watching Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade means that you secretly support fascism? Because there's swastikas all over the place? Or playing Wolfenstein means you're okay with fascism? Because there's swastikas all over the place? I mean, I didn't find myself puking my way through the New Order. Instead, I found myself having a hell of a time, and having an absolute blast. And The Last Crusade still remains as one of my favorite movies. 
because I'm not traumatized by simply seeing a swastika on a wall, or on a uniform, or on a flag. After all, this is us talking about video game multiplayer. If it's so traumatizing to see a faction symbol from that time period, then don't participate. Go play Roblox or something. Because if you can't handle it, then why would you buy the game? It's like people buying Doom and then being traumatized by the gore. If it's such a big deal to you, then just don't buy it. Because I guarantee you, no one else wants to listen to you complain about it. Now, does this make us totally ignore the history that comes with them? No. But for some people, it moves them from the territory of revolting to just edgy. People like to make edgy jokes because it pisses people like you off. And the reactions are often golden. Because people like you can't seem to enjoy jokes or certain types of media because you're overly sensitive. We also make these jokes because we know those ideologies and ideas are bad. We know what the Nazis did was awful. That's part of why we mock them. Because making a mockery of something is a pretty damn good way to make sure it doesn't happen again. Why do you think, in medieval times, after defeating their enemies, the enemy leader would be captured and berated through the streets and made a mockery of? Simple. Because it takes away their power and strips them down to nothing. And the same logic can be applied to turning terrible ideologies into just an enemy faction in a video game. Or just an equal side in multiplayer. It makes scrawling a swastika on something change from unthinkable to just dangerous. It means you might not take iron crosses all over a website as a warning sign that you should immediately leave. And if you don't leave, you might start reading and buying into hateful ideas there. Oh no, not challenging your ideas. Remind me why it's a bad thing to understand the other side's point of view. I'm not condoning hateful ideas by saying that. I'm just saying remind me again why it's bad to understand what they're saying to actually know what they're saying rather than just going with what you're told by other people, by third parties. But no, no, we can't have our opinions challenged. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll take back everything I've said throughout the course of this entire video. Except I won't. Because you have yet to actually make a coherent argument. Because it is not a bad thing to challenge your opinions by looking at what your opposition says. In fact, it's actually a good thing. It's a good thing to challenge your ideas. Because you might actually learn something for once. Extra credits, please take notes. It seems like such a small and simple thing, but it's things like this that erode our safeguards against dangers we sacrifice so much to fight. By the time you've played a hundred hours of being a Nazi, their voice stabs become memes and in-jokes with your friends. By the thousandth time you've respawned as a terrorist, you're either celebrating them or making fun of them, neither of which helps the global crisis we have that takes thousands of lives every year. Wait, hold up. So you're saying that playing... As a Nazi, in a World War II game's multiplayer makes you a Nazi in real life? What? Are you kidding me? I thought we were past this! That's not how reality works. I'm not a Nazi because I watched The Last Crusade 4,000 times. I'm not a Nazi because I played Nazi Zombie since it first came out. I am not a Nazi because I played Wolfenstein for 100 hours. I'm not a terrorist because I have, what, 400 hours on CSGO now? And I don't think I can fly because I put 300 hours into Just Cause 3. How stupid do you think your audience is? And on top of that, yeah, we do laugh at voice lines because they're oftentimes hilarious. Why do you think Tactical Nuke Incoming from Modern Warfare 2 is still a meme? Why do you think I laugh my ass off at the German announcer in Call of Duty World at War to this day? I know why. Because it's funny! So what do we do? That's easy. Don't make them morally equivalent. Again, we're talking about multiplayer. We're not making them morally equivalent, we're making them functionally equivalent. Because this is the multiplayer. This is the competitive mode, not the campaign. There is no narrative. There is no story. There are no morals. No one is saying that they are morally equivalent. This is multiplayer. Neither team has morals. But you've also been making the argument throughout this entire video that it's bad we're making them functionally equivalent in a competitive environment. You've changed your argument now. You've changed your argument to something that, eh, no, they, make both, they both make about the same amount of sense. Because neither one makes sense at all. Because this is multiplayer. Don't make there be no in-game moral difference between your Nazis and your allies. Between your terrorists and your counter-terrorist squads. A video game is not obligated to teach you about the morals of either side, especially in multiplayer. This is PvP. 
This is competitive. The only difference there should be between either side is skill. No cheese, no special weapons or special handicaps for one side because the other in the campaign and in history has a bad ideology. This is competitive mode. No morals. Just complete the objective or get more kills in the enemy team. Frame PvP as a training exercise, or simply take one of your non-odious sides and recolor them so that it's red versus blue, rather than Axis versus Allies. We have that. It's called Halo. But people like themed games. People like World War II games because they're based on World War II, not because it is red versus blue. People like Star Wars games because they are themed off of Star Wars. People like CSGO because it's terrorists versus counter-terrorists. Because people like themed games. If everything was red versus blue, none of it would be unique. So, if you can't handle the fact that it's Nazis versus allies, then just play Halo. Or, since, you know, the Covenant are a genocidal faction, and, you know, we can't have that, go play Roblox. A good example of a game that does this is Rainbow Six Siege. All of your bomb diffusion and hostage rescue multiplayer with no normalizing terrorists. In fact, by having all of the characters as counter-terrorists training for a possible threat, it highlights how real and present of a threat that is. Yeah, but not everybody likes that. A lot of people like themed games with a different theme than that. A game is not obligated to cater to your needs. It is not obligated to cater to your morals. And who agrees with me on this? Well, everyone who disliked this video. In other words, the vast majority of people who've watched this video. And if you decide that you need to have both sides be playable, don't make them interchangeable. If you don't want to play as a Nazi, then choose to play as an allied soldier. If they are not functionally interchangeable, it is not balanced. If it's not balanced, good luck getting people to play your game. Unbalanced games piss people off. Don't have players randomly spawn in as one or the other. Allow players to choose which side they're on. I have never played a themed game aside from Rainbow Six Siege that didn't allow me to choose my team, or at least give me the option to change teams. And if I got put on a team against my will, it's because numbers were unbalanced. If one team has considerably more members, that's not balanced. And that is how you piss people off. Because if one team has an inherent advantage, the other team is unplayable. In other words, what would be the point of playing the multiplayer? Now, of course, this has all sorts of in-game problems, such as creating shorter wait times for fascists. I'm sorry, what? What are you talking about? What do you mean shorter wait times for fascists? You make it out to be like everyone who has ever played as a Nazi in a video game is a Nazi in real life. Why do I get the feeling that you have never actually played a video game before? Because here's how multiplayer works. You join a lobby. You either pick or are put onto a specific team. The numbers are balanced, same amount of members on each side, or as close to it as you can get. You then either choose your class or all spawn with the same weapon, all of which are balanced. And then you fight it out to either hold the objective longer, steal the flag, or get more kills in the enemy team, or defend the bomb until it detonates. I don't know why I didn't just say complete the objective or get more kills, but that's besides the point. Not, oh, hey, you picked a not. you're playing as a Nazi. So you get a shorter wait time. Like, th there is no argument here. There isn't one. There really isn't. But you know what? Those wait times could be artificially extended. If it meant players had an active choice in what teams they would represent, if you're saying we need people playing Nazis in our games. I'm sorry, what? No. No one. No one. No matter which team you're on, wants to wait to play the game. When people, when people play multiplayer, they want to get right into the action. They want to get right into it and start killing each other. Not... Not, oh, let's penalize this team because their real-life equivalent has a bad ideology. That makes things unbalanced. And that makes people not play the game. That pisses people off. Causes controversy. Everything. No. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you have to say. You do not get to artificially inflate my wait times because you disagree with the ideology that that team quote-unquote represents. Even though it is multiplayer. All you are is a bunch of vessels for hitboxes and guns. So no. Fuck that. And if you're going to say, but we need it for historical reasons, then your game better actually be historical. You can't really just hide behind the fact you called your desert map El Alamein and say, but it's historical. 
That's called historical accuracy. I don't play video games to be lectured about how everything went down. To be historically immersed in a game, it shouldn't be 100% a one-to-one -one recreation in multiplayer about how a specific battle went down. It doesn't need to be a one-to-one -one recreation of the battle to be historically accurate or historically immersive. For example, again, the Hellriga. It was an experimental submachine gun, but it fits perfectly because it is time period specific. All a game has to do to be historically accurate is be consistent with that time period. If that were the case, you need your PvP to at least represent real historical events and be a realistic take on those battles. Once you make both sides balanced, it's also no longer historical. And you can't really say that you need Nazis anymore for historical accuracy. For a game to be historically accurate, it does not need to be a 100% one-to-one recreation of what actually happened, especially in multiplayer. If you want historical accuracy to be like that, then go play the campaign. Or even better, turn on the History Channel, or open a book. We want the locations in-game to be representative of the real locations, not 100% one-to-one recreations of said locations. We want the guns and vehicles to be time period specific. Look at Call of Duty World at War, for example. That game's pretty damn historically accurate, yet it also has good map design that isn't exactly like it was in real life. You can also be an American running around with an MP40, or likewise be a Nazi running around with a trench gun, or a Thompson, or for the sake of plugging my favorite gun from that game, the PPSH. Oh, and once you let players get cool weapons that weren't actually at that particular battleground, it's also no longer historically accurate. Using that logic, Wolfenstein can't have Nazis because it's not historically accurate in the slightest. Because the Nazis didn't really win World War II. And there weren't Gatling lasers in the 1960s. The Nazis didn't have basically power armor, or giant robotic dogs, or the technology to reanimate the dead, or that giant monster thing from the end of Old Blood. I also don't remember a, what was that, like 2,000 foot tall quadrupedal robot walking around London in the 60s? I mean, it's got to be either 100% historically accurate, or it can't have Nazis, right? See, your logic doesn't make any sense. And you can't declare that your game will suffer if you don't put players in the jackboots of the Third Reich. If it's a World War II themed video game, then yes, it will suffer. Because, and this might come as a shock to you, that's not historically accurate. And once your map is something carefully designed to have good gameplay by a team in a room in San Francisco or LA, and it's not a faithful reconstruction of the actual places the historical events occurred in, you can no longer say we need to have players take up arms in service of terror or hate. But they're not taking up arms in service of terror or hate. They're inhabiting a vessel in a video game to shoot other vessels in a video game. You're just a hitbox with a gun shooting other hitboxes with guns. By playing as a Nazi-themed character, in a World War II shooter, that does not mean that you're in support of the Third Reich. Playing a video game that features Nazis does not make real-life Nazis. Playing as a terrorist in CSGO does not make you a real-life terrorist. Playing as an elite in Halo does not make you a cannibalistic, genocidal servant of the Covenant Armada. And look, we're not saying we can't have games about World War II or about terrorism. We're not even saying we shouldn't make games where you play as a Nazi or a terrorist. But what we are saying is that the fact that you're playing as a Nazi or a terrorist in a game has to mean something. Except it doesn't have to mean something. We're talking about multiplayer here. A video game's multiplayer should not be pushing a political agenda. The developers should instead focus on the fucking game. They should focus on making a fun, balanced, multiplayer experience that works. And it can't just be a skin. It can't be something that a game randomly drops you into. Why can't it just be a skin? Because history? Guess what? It's a video game. It is literally just a skin, whether there's a story or not. You're nothing but a hitbox with a gun. By booting up multiplayer, you are not taking up service in the name of the Third Reich. You're playing a video game's multiplayer. It quite literally means nothing. And it quite literally is just a skin. And really, if we are saying anything in this episode, it's this. Games can do better. And in this particular case, it's not even that hard to do better. And it's no more costly to do better. All it requires is that we in the game industry be cognizant of the world around us and what these symbols we're drawing on mean. 
that we think as we're building, not just about the game we're working on, but about the world as a whole. If we can do that, we can take a big step forward for the industry. We can stop helping to normalize Nazis. Well, that video was an absolute abortion. It contained most of the usual anti-video game statements saying that we are literally normalizing Nazis, even though we're not. Because no sane person is going to go from playing Call of Duty World at War to being a member of the Third Reich. And no one is going to play CSGO and then go blow some place up. This video was propaganda. And the like to dislike bar would also agree with me. But as I said earlier on, they have a pinned comment on the video. So, let's dissect it, shall we? It reads, Edit. Hey folks, so this one seems to have struck a nerve. We encourage discussion about the topic, and there's some fair criticism of the video out there. However, I wanted to address some comments that seem to have misunderstood some aspects of the video. Number one, we never said that playing as a Nazi turns you into a Nazi. That's not how that works. That's not how any of this works. However, there's plenty of research about how art and media can shift people's perspectives. It's not a good or bad thing. This is just a natural effect of culture. Please look up the Overton window, or heck, you could watch our video on propaganda games over here. No one should have to put on the costume of an ideology they find abhorrent without actually opting into it in your game. And by making people do so, we get them to stop thinking about it, to stop thinking of the meaning behind these things. We normalize them. We make them just window dressing for entertainment. Those uniforms, those symbols, become things that no longer inherently revolt us. They reduce our visceral reaction to seeing the embodiment of these ideologies. Now, does this make us totally ignore the history that comes with them? No. But for some people, it moves them from the territory of revolting to just edgy. It makes scrawling a swastika on something change from unthinkable to just dangerous. It means you might not take iron crosses all over a website as a warning sign that you should immediately leave. And if you don't leave, you might start reading and buying into hateful ideas there. Really, because it sounded like you said just that in that clip right there. That it erodes our safeguards, and that things go from unthinkable to just edgy, and you might not click off of that website filled with iron crosses, all because your character looked like a Nazi in a video game. Which is blatantly false. Because you did basically say that. And you are right. That's just not how this works. That's not how anything works. Number two. We never said that games should never let you play as Nazis or terrorists, for that matter. If you need the exact timestamp, it's at 4 minutes 47 seconds. There's a lot of potential for some really interesting or impactful games that put the players in the boots of people or control systems that have done incredible harm. But it can't be done thoughtlessly, or just as skin, on top of mechanics, devoid of context. So yeah, you're right, you did never say that. But you did say that we should make a game that's basically unplayable. Because history. To which I reply as I did in my video, Yes, you can. It can just be a skin on top of mechanics devoid of context, because it's multiplayer. You are playing a themed mode where you run around shooting other people as a hitbox with a skin and a gun. So in other words, you should never be allowed to play as a Nazi or a terrorist unless you fit our very specific parameters because we don't like it. Number three. For those saying that it's just a game and we shouldn't think too hard about it, I feel like perhaps it might be important to introduce ourselves. Hi, we're Extra Credits. Our tagline for a very long time was because games matter. It's something we fundamentally believe, and if you don't, that's okay! But then, our content might not be right for you. Cause thinking hard about games is kind of our shtick. To which I say, you've thought a little too hard about games. I think hard about games all the time. Namely their extended lore. Because I have no life. And no, the politics of a video game's multiplayer don't matter. Multiplayer should not be used to push an agenda, and if it is, well... Good luck getting people to play it. Why do you think Overwatch has been having so much controversy recently? Number four, our writing staff is the same, and we've always talked about politics and games in our other videos. If this comes as a surprise to you, or you think there's been a large shift in our thinking, I'd invite you to take a look at some of our older episodes. We live in a time where neo-Nazis exist, and they've seemed to have increasingly found a home in gaming communities. This isn't something we can turn a blind eye to anymore. And it's important to consider what we as game designers can do to try and make things better. Except pushing an agenda never ends well. Just look at Battlefield 5. Or the state of the Overwatch community. Yeah, neo-Nazis exist. Scumbags will always exist, and there's nothing you can do about it. Don't screw the rest of us over because of a small minority of people. If the majority of us, the sane people who aren't neo-Nazis, want to play a World War II themed first-person shooter where you might have a chance of fighting 
as a Nazi-themed character, we shouldn't have to suffer because a small minority of people decided, hey, we're going to continue to be racist assholes, post-1945. Good for them. Don't punish the rest of us because they're assholes. But anyway, overall this video was an absolute abortion. And I've managed to use up all of my gameplay that I've had saved up. So there's that. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, then please do consider liking, subscribing, clicking the bell icon, you know, all of the above. If you want to see more from me, then uh, just check out one of two videos that'll be on the end card. If you have anything you want either me or Markok to take a look at, then please do consider submitting them on our Discord server, which will be linked in the description, or my subreddit, which will also be linked in the description. Be sure to follow me on Twitter for memes, thoughts, and updates, providing I ever actually open it. Anyways, I will see you guys next time I decide to make another video. It's been fun. Now stop looking at me.